The Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. A hand of applause to His Excellency, the Deputy President. Welcome, Your Excellency. Kindly let's all be upstanding. the COD Secretary and right away I go to open remarks from Madam Mary Mwiti, the COD Secretary. His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Riyadi Yashagwa, our peers for the State Department of Devolution, the Deputy Governor at present, partner we really delighted this, this day and special thanks go to the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya for honoring us the opportunity now to meet you again as Deputy Governor's Forum and I look forward to having an interaction. What Mr. Mestagen is about to happen in the political leadership, it should never be allowed to generate to fall out. The situation we are seeing in Nyanza in one of the counties is not anything that one would talk about. It's unnecessary is unhealthy and it can be resolved in one way or another. This defeats the essence of grassroots leadership and indeed evolution, a critical component of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Counties are key ingredient in the Kenya Kwanza plan and we want to see the evolution working. We had a conversation and agreed on how to change the deliver our approach to the people. We are joined at the heat. The success of William Ruto as president is the success of the Kandika Shalwa's The failure of President William Ruto as president is the failure of Deputy President Kandika Shalwa. Similarly, the success of your governor is your success. The failure of your governor is your failure. It therefore, behoves you and your government to work together collectively to succeed because both of you have a five-year social contract with the residents of your county. That contract will be renewed on successful delivery or terminated on definitive delivery. So you are in the same boat and suffer a similar fate either way. Through executive order number one of 2023, President William Ruto spelled out my roles as Deputy President. A clear definition of the roles and responsibilities of the President and Deputy has helped us work in a complementary and not in competition. When we came in, the cost of Bunda was 230 sheets. We have progressively through good thinking and planning, without any substance, brought the cost down to 190, to 180, to 170, to 160. As we talk today on the shelf, there are many supermarkets offering Uga at 159 shillings up to 155. And I can tell you it will continue going down, awaiting the harvest in September. And after the harvest, because of the intervention that we have done to assist our farmers with subsidized fertilizer, we intend and we believe we'll be able to bring down the cost of Wonga to about 130, about 120. And that is what is sustainable. The economy has started showing good signs of recovery. As we speak today, when we came in, the cost of Wonga was 230 sheets. We have progressively through good thinking and planning, without any substance, brought the cost down to 190, to 
110 to 170 to 160. As we talk today, on the shelf, there are many supermarkets offering Oga at 159 shillings up to 155. And I can tell you it will continue going down, awaiting the harvest in September. And after the harvest, because of the intervention that we have done to assist our farmers with subsidized fertilizer, we intend and we believe we will be able to bring down the cost of Oga to about 130, about 120. And that is what is sustainable. Because the president, in his wisdom, with proper advice from economics, decided that you cannot subsidize consumption. It's not sustainable, it is foolish, it cannot work. And we agreed, under the guidance of the president, that the way to go is to subsidize production. In any case, those subsidies were not working and it was theft. The Auditor General has issued a report that 34 billion shillings for the fuel subsidy cannot be traced. It was about theft, about the subsidy of Ola, the one we were told that is 100 shillings. Nobody found that to come anywhere. 8 billion shillings were spent at the National Treasury, and the millers are still asking for their money. All that money was stolen and diverted to the Azimio campaign. We are not going to go that way. Even if they go to the streets, even if they put souvenirs on the head, we are not going to the estate uh, subsidy because it is foolish and it's not sustainable. The way to fix the cost of living is subsidizing production, putting money where it matters, in terms of fertilizers, in terms of seeds, in terms of other encouraging measures to allow our people to produce more at a less cost. That is a way in a sustainable manner that will bring down the cost of living. And I want to say with pride that we are doing extremely well. We don't expect our detractors to see it because they wouldn't see it. But what will happen, even if they close their eyes, it's okay. When they open them, they will find that Tunga is 159. They don't want to see that Tunga is at 159. So they can shut down their eyes for some time. But since they cannot shut their eyes forever, they have to reopen them. When they open them, they will find that the world has gone down. And it will continue going down. So that is the situation. So the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. A hand of applause to His Excellency, the Deputy President. Welcome, Your Excellency. Kindly let's all be upstanding. the COD Secretary and later I are going to open the remarks from Madam Mary Mwiti, the COD Secretary. His Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Rigadi Ashagwa, our peers for the State Department of Devolution, the Deputy Governor at present, partner, we really delighted this, this day. A special thanks go to the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya for honoring us opportunity now to meet you again as Deputy Governor's Forum and I look forward to having an interaction. 